And then there's South Dakota Governor Kirsty Noem. Trump says she's, quote, somebody that I love. She's been with me, a supporter of mine, and I've been a supporter of hers for a long time. Whoever Trump chooses for VP will have to debate this woman. Madam Vice President, Hamas has accepted a ceasefire deal. Hamas has accepted a ceasefire deal. Your reaction? Shrimp and grits. South Dakota governor and author of No Going Back, Christy Noem joins me now. All right. So, Governor, here's the book. Yes. You're going to be debating, if you are the VP, Kamala Harris. Now, what are you going to tell her? <laughs> I will. Well, I've never had shrimp and grits before, that's for <laughs> sure. But, you know, she would, I would actually enjoy that debate. I think that she is in too big of a job for her capacity. And I think that President Trump is going to be back in the White House real soon. And I've told him I'll do whatever he wants me to do to help him win. Uh, we, when he was in the White House as governor, I was on offense every day. I got the chance to solve problems for my people in South Dakota. And ever since Joe Biden's been there, all I do is be on defense and try to defend our freedoms and liberties. So uh, this President Trump that has been so persecuted politically, um, I'll do everything I can to help him get back into leadership of this country. Now, what happens if you are debating Kamala Harris and she says, well, wait a second, mm -hmm. you shot your dog and you wrote a book about it, bragging about it. Mm -hmm. How can you be vice president? You know, that story was a choice as a mom. The safety of my children versus a dangerous dog that was killing livestock and attacking people. So I, this book that I've written is full of stories of my past, hard decisions, and I told the truth. And I think that's very different than a lot of politicians that we have today. A do lot you of regret politicians, telling that story? Do you feel like, oh, maybe I should have said it? Do you understand why people don't like that story? Well, everybody's known that story for years. That's what most people don't realize is that in South Dakota, they've used that story to attack me and my political campaigns for years. I wanted people to know the truth. This dog was vicious. It was dangerous. It was killing livestock for the joy of it and attacking people. And I had a choice between keeping my family safe. I had little kids at the time, a very public business of inviting people out to come out and enjoy our hunting lodge and our business. And I don't pass my responsibilities off to anybody else. So that story is in the book because I want people to know that I'm honest and that I, when I have difficult jobs, that I take responsibility myself. All right, so you're standing by the dog story. Well, I'll tell you what, it's the facts. Okay, uh, that's it's the, the facts. facts. And I understand that they're attacking me for it, Jesse. Yeah, they are. So they're also attacking you. I guess you said you met Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Did you meet him? I've been to the DMZ. I've been to North Korea. You know, people, I don't talk about my conversations with world leaders. And so uh, when I looked at the book and I saw that excerpt, I decided to make the change to the content of the book, and that's been done. So you didn't have a conversation with Kim when you were at the DMZ? I don't have conversations about my conversations with world leaders. I've been working on <laughs> okay. policy for 30 years, okay. Jesse, and that's what most people don't remember about me is I'm old. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a mom. I'm a grandma. You're I've got three old. little grandbabies. You're not that old. So maybe for, you did have a conversation with years. Kim, but you don't want to talk I about it. I will not talk about my personal conversations with any world leaders. It just won't, and I'm not going to do it. What have you learned from this book tour? that I've already had these interviews, and we should be talking about what Americans care about. Americans care about how do we get our country back, and that's what this book is about. This book is a how-to guide for the American citizen. That is, how do I take my country back? What can I do? Does my voice matter? Does it matter if I show up and vote? How do I make a difference? And this, every single chapter in this book says, yes, there's corruption in politics. Yes, money is too powerful. Yes, the consultants are lining their pockets with your money, and they don't give a rip about who gets elected. They just want to get rich. This is what the average citizen can do. It uses my past and stories and lessons learned, and it tells the average citizen that when they show up, they make a difference. When they call, it matters. When you send an email, people sit up and pay attention. This is not the time to check out on America. This is the time to save America. We have an election coming for Donald Trump. Is the people that support him are people who love America. Everybody else that is in the White House right now are trying to destroy America. This is when it matters that the average citizen has okay. a blue t blueprint for how to do that. Christine, no, I just found out because I was so excited that you gave me a cowboy hat. Yes. And then I found out you also gave Gutfeld one. Oh my goodness. And now I feel like you give hats out to just anybody. I thought I was special, Governor. You are special. I am special. Well, now we've upped the game. Now you need a pair of cowboy boots. Now I need boots. <laughs> Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you, Good Jesse. Luck. You bet.